the topic of today, like we say, is things you must be aware of if you don't want to be brainwashed in the church, of course. All right, from here, we are going to go into the... Let's see one of the videos that tell us how the method of how these people are brainwashing us. Okay, here we go. One of Never the, speak against the man of God. Stop, 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 stop. Right. One of the chief brainwashers of uh, Nigerian Christianity is the one we are going to start with today. All right, can you start a little bit earlier? Never speak against the man of God. You know, when you hear people talk against men of God, they are people who have never heard from us. Stop. You know, if you've never... Okay, what, what does that mean? You know, for, <clears throat> for already brainwashed church member, religious person in Nigeria, in Africa. Okay, for example, if you make a statement like this to, Europe, to a European, if you come to my church, right, and I'm having a white church, right, you know, 99% white congregation, and I come, I say, never speak against man of God. I lose my church immediately. Because people begin to suspect. It's obvious that I say, never speak against me. It means I'm conditioning them. White people know exactly what that means. Because they are educated. They know that if you say never, it means you are telling them never question what I do. Never speak against man of God. So that is hypnotism. I mean, that is brainwashing. I mean, it's not even pretend. It's not even hidden. Open day brainwash. And white people don't like that. If you tell them something like that, they say, oh, you don't want me to use my mind? Then I'm not here. I'm gone. They know you will lose your ch church immediately. But in Africa, people are taking advantage of people that Africans have too much faith in men of God and thinking that men of God are almost synonymous to God. So to say that never speak against a man of God and tell them koro koro, you know, it's one thing for you to brainwash people indirectly and to use tricks to, you know, to just pretend. But for you, for a man of God to come out plain, clear, and say, never speak against man of God. I mean, it's daylight robbery. It's outright, it's just, it's actually playing on your intelligence. It's actually, please come here. It's actually being so sure that, I mean, it's an assault. Outright assault on your intelligence. I mean, I mean, looking at you, Prayer, no, right in the eyes and say you should never so speak against man of God. He's not even hiding it that ah, this guy could suspend though. What about if he suspends that I'm telling him not to think, I'm telling him not to challenge me. Because if you everything, every truth, truth has to be challenged. Every affirmation has to be challenged. So if you are now saying don't challenge what I'm saying, even the one who is receiving it himself is a fool. I'm sorry for the word. You have to be a fool to even receive that, to even listen to that. But you see, that is how they are calling us to be. That is how these pastors look at you. They don't look at you as people who, who have their own mind, independent mind. They look at you as a fool. They don't tell you, don't question, never question the man of God. And they will still make you to feel as if they are doing it for your own interest. They will still make you to feel it's because that is Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome is when you, you know, you, you oppress somebody and you make the person feel as if you are the one doing him good. He should rather be defending you. So these people who are now being taken advantage of, they are now going to be thinking that, ah, he's, the, he's, he's their benefactor. So how, how do you see that, uh, I know, as somebody that, is from the 21st century a thinking person yeah. how do you see a man of god a pastor anybody not even a pastor anybody okay just like you are a doctor now you are a medical doctor yes, you are coming to your okay. patients and say i'm i'm giving you prescription never ask me questions never question the prescription no ah uh -uh. will you not suspend if you are normal well that's that that that's a red that's a red no red light there red flag, right? the red flag. It means that ah, maybe he, he wants to kill me, or maybe he wants to True. he wants to poison me, or maybe he's not even giving me the right thing. But these people are not even afraid of being of people of 
They are not even thinking that they are being challenged. They don't even. They are not even afraid that ah. What about if they challenge me? What about if somebody says, "What do you mean? Why we should it?" They are not even bothered about that. They know that people will just swallow whatever they say. I want to hear your opinion about what this guy is. Let's hear it again before you. Okay. Before you speak. Never speak against the man of God. You know, when you hear people talk against men of God, they're people who have never heard from us. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Never speak against man of God. So what will you say? Yeah, so he's, he's fully aware of um, the kind of people he has in his congregation and how well he has worked on their minds, knowing fully well that... He that, has turned them into, into mummies. Yeah, knowing fully well that um, making that kind of statement... They, they, are, they are not going to see anything wrong in it. And um, they are not going to um, even think through that statement. Because um, talking as a, as a medical doctor, when you, when you meet a patient and you want to, and you're consulting with the patient, now you're asking the patient questions, how are you doing, what is the problem? And then the patient openly tells you what I, what I think, what I have. Okay, so then you take all of those information and then you want to, prescribe your treatment to the patient. Now, the patient has every right to question you. Why are you giving me this drug? Which, okay, what will be the effect of this drug? Um, what if this happens? Okay, the last time I used this drug, it didn't work well. But what is the assurance that this drug will work this time? So that, that is exactly what makes the person a human being and not an animal or not just a plant. So if you're saying a person cannot question you or cannot, um, cannot speak because you are a man of God, what you just literally did was to transform that human being to an animal or to transform that, you know, that human being to someone who lacks the ability to think or to process things. So this, this is exactly the reason why many things are just swallowed without people even processing them that, okay, if, mom, if the person that is saying this is saying it, I need to question it to know, okay, why are you saying this? And you know, this just presents, this is presenting themselves as infallible. Because if you are saying, never speak against a man of God, then what you are saying is that that man of God does, cannot, cannot do any wrong. The man of God cannot do anything wrong. So don't speak against him. And if you speak against him, like, like you rightly said, the Stockholm um, Syndrome, you're going to, it's, it's going to be, um, um, it's going to be counterproductive for you. You're not going to get anything good for yourself because if you do so, there's something bad will happen to you and maybe God's rot will fall against you and all of those threats and those fears that they just put into people's mind. And but, if anything bad really happens, they'll say, Aha. Exactly. That's what happened. That is, so. It's because it spoke. Because you spoke. And then they also, they also give testimonies of, you see, the, the other time, someone said this to me, and um, this happened to the person. So if you want to express the same thing, then speak and things like that, just to manipulate people and to, to bring people under their subjection and their rulership and to make people subservient, to make people less of, of humans, to de dehumanize people, to brainwash people. Okay, one of, the same peop one of those same people is here now. Somebody is writing in his comment here to me. He's saying, this man, eh, call Adel this man, eh, call Adelaja. This Adelaide man is jobless, so, because I'm talking about this. This is, this is his own conclusion, that this thing I'm teaching you is a sign of joblessness. No, Pastor, you know, the thing there is that, <laughs> <laughs> the thing there is that people, people don't realize how important this is actually. Ah. Yeah, because they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't even see, they don't understand the implication of things like this. They, 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 they cons consider it as trivial. Because they don't understand what it means to even be a human being, pastor. Because how can you qualify yourself to be a human being if you can't think? How can you qualify yourself to be a human being if you can't question things? If you can't challenge things? So they don't understand that this is actually, this is not even so much about religion. This is not so much about even spirituality, but it's about just being a human Understanding the concept of life as a homo sapien, as a thinking person. 
So it's not one about um, just being um, church or this is just a practical life situation that every human being has the right to question anything he doesn't understand. Whatever you think that you don't get and you don't understand, you have the right as a human being to speak, ask questions. So but someone denying you of this right that you have as a human being, he's literally dehumanizing you. That is it. There's nothing. There's nothing. Well, he is thinking that I'm jobless for even raising the topic. <laughs> well, it's it's just sad. He doesn't even know that I'm helping him. Yes. To be a human being. <laughs> to be a human being. That's that's what the point. To be a human. To be a thinking person. To be a living soul. It's it's. It's really pathetic. It's really pathetic. And this, some, some other people will be coming and say, I'm criticizing other men of God. Is this criticizing? No. <laughs> no. I'm just opening the eyes of the people to, for them not to, to be aware, not to yeah. be brainwashed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's see the video for that. Never speak against the man of God. You know, when you hear people talk against men of God, they're people who have never heard from us. You know, if you've never learned from us, you you you, you no. say things like that. You, you say people who have never heard from us. What do you mean? They've never heard from you, but they have. But what is actually saying that they have never learned from them, which is they have not been brainwashed by us. That's what it's talking about. <laughs> they have not been conditioned by us. They have not been trained to reason the way we want them to reason. They have not been enslaved by us. Because that is the business mm -hmm. in Nigerian churches. Nigerian pastors, these especially all these pastors, they just want to brainwash and enslave people's mind. Now, somebody say, whenever I talk like the people who say, but not all of them. Of course, I know it's not all of them. We always have 7,000 remnants. But I'm just talking in general, the ones we see in public. You see, so this is a sign that this guy is brainwashing. So, what are the signs? What are the things you must be aware of if you don't want them to brainwash you? That's what I'm doing today. Yeah. You talk against men of God, but if you're in this ministry and you've been hearing from us, you've been taught by us. You don't speak against men of God. You see? When you hear others, so that is to confirm what I said. If you have been brainwashed by us, if you have been taught by us, if you have been conditioned by us. You don't talk about my number. So they are seeing it as their success that people are not talking. Speak against men of God. Stop, stop. Okay, here we go. You, 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 you say things like that. You talk against men of God. But if you're in this ministry and you've been hearing from us, you've been taught by us, you don't speak against men of God. When you hear others talk against men of God, keep your mouth shut. Go stop. away from there. Look, look, because look. to speak against... Stop. When you hear others talk against men of God, keep your... Are you the one to tell me to keep my mouth shut? <laughs> as if he's talking to kids. I think that's the way they relate to these our people. As if they are children. Yeah. As if they have to be conditioned. Keep your mouth shut. Just let me hear that one again. If we don't come here. They are just, as if they are, they are not even, it's even lack of respect. They are not treating people with honor, dignity, any form of respect whatsoever. You're hearing from us, you've been taught by us. You don't speak against men of God. When you hear others talk against men of God, keep your mouth shut. Go away from there. Keep your mouth shut. And this guy is talking to adults. Mm -hmm. Okay, may I hear you? Yeah, this is outright daylight brainwashing. It's not oh, hiding anything. Well, I can hear you. For me, I think the first fault lies in the definition of who is the man of God. I grow when they are louder, louder. I think the, the first fault is in their definition of who is the man of God. And usually it's, a, it's always uh, the person who is a pastor or who is within the fivefold ministry. So the rest of the people either belong to Satan or to the world. <laughs> you know? So they are men of the flesh or men of uh, whatever they are. But in the real sense, even if this were to be obeyed, 
then you can really see that we will never have a nation with a voice. And people will be fine asking what's wrong with Nigeria. Because number one, uh, the, another set of people who are men of God who we actually criticize every day and nobody has said anything are politicians. Because authority, the Bible says it comes from God. And these same people, eh, the way they will tear politicians down on their phone. But why is it them that must not be talked about? The reason is because this is the mechanism they use every day to subjugate people, to dehumanize them. And this is why we are saying that all of these people who are doing things against the finished work of Christ. The Bible says you have not received the spirit of slavery by which you may fall back into fear. But it says you have received the spirit of adoption by which you can call out, you can cry out, Abba, Father. Now you know that God is directly your father. But these people want to keep you in subjugation. To always think that uh, you are one kind of less uh, human, lesbian and they are like assistant God. And so you must not talk about assistant, uh, assistant God. When in the real sense... Even God calls for questioning. When it comes to the affairs of earth, <laughs> God calls for questioning. So who is the man of God? He even said you should question him. Yes. <laughs> he said God if they give you permission to question yes. him. Yes. <laughs> so if God subjects himself to questioning, why should the man of God then be bigger than God? That God will be questioned, but the man of God cannot be questioned. But, you know, even prophecies are, that comes directly from God, though, prophecy always comes from God. Corinthians says, if these ones are prophesying, the rest of you should sit down around them and begin to judge the prophecy. This one is direct word from not the, God. Not just message. No, this one is not message. This is prophecy coming from, it says, <laughs> judge it. <laughs> so if someone is not saying something that is antithetical, that is, that is contrary to, to the finished work of Christ, that is contrary to what Christ came for. That is contrary to the embodiment of Christianity. Would it matter who is saying it? Paul said, let the person be accursed. This, this way, we, we are not even causing you here to. <laughs> Nobody is saying who on to that person here to. And you are talking like this. Okay, when they now start saying be accursed, we will we'll see what you say. But however, they know what they are doing. It's always a way of uh it, it's, it's it's a way of psychological repression they must, and you see that uh the the whole slavery and civil liberty right comes from freedom i mean the basis of civil liberty right is comes from the freedom of expression you find that there is the same mechanism in every totalitarian state where they take away the freedom of the people to express themselves and so they subjugate the people and people begin to live uh like animals you can see that I mean, the trend in the former Soviet Union, you can see the trend in Venezuela, you can see the trend in, I mean, everywhere you find dicta dictatorship. So it's like the church is a new place now where dictatorship is moving. And later they will say, uh, this man is wrong. What was his name? Um, Karl Marx. It's like Karl Marx is the prophet of the church now. Hmm? Because it's, it's his principle that they are now using. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. <laughs> this one tough one. <laughs> ah, Koske. Mm -hmm. So, if I speak against Chris now, I bring cause against myself and against my own children, children, or children. Ah. Thank God, God, not be man. No. Mm -hmm. Everybody would have been caused long time ago. But why should they bring cause here? Maybe you will understand. I don't understand. Cause, I mean, he's taking it too far. You understand? But why curse? I mean, that's, that is totally bizarre. I mean, that is outright assault. That is like even threatening people now. Threat. Pastor, it's, it's scripture based. <laughs> the base is the five scriptures. Yeah, it's based it's based on the scripture and it's a very popular one. Which one? And that's the story of Moses and Mary. Aaron, Aaron Mary. and Miriam. But the thing is that people are not students of the word. They don't study their Bible. And they and they are not critical thinkers and they, they're not able to find the truth even in that story. Let's analyze that story. Notice that it was it wasn't only Miriam that spoke against Moses. I, are you guys aware? Even, even Aaron did. Aaron did. But 
Aaron and Moses and Miriam spoke against and they spoke against Moses. But what happened? What made Miriam caused or brought the, punished, yeah. punished? And what made Aaron escape? Escape. There is a truth in that that we need to realize. And what is that? It was because Aaron was wearing the priesthood garments. He was he was a priest. And so he had that immunity to speak and to talk of which Miriam did not have. And that was the reason why nothing happened to Aaron. So let's let's bring it now to our time. The Bible talked about we in this in this dispensation that God has made us a kingdom Everyone. of a kingdom of priests. Everybody. Every child of God is a priest. There is nobody who is better. No one has a, an advantage over you as when it comes to you and your father in heaven. And that was the reason why when Jesus was to teach his disciples, he didn't say, pray to my father. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, when you pray, say, our. He remo Jesus removed himself from the road. <laughs> he didn't say, the God of Jeremiah, or the God of Oedipo, or God of, um, pray to my, my own God. He said, pray to our father. It means, I'm, the, I'm a son of God. You also are a son. It's your he, father as well. He as, is your father. Just as he's mine, it's yours too. Yes. So don't go through me. Don't just. go through me. Just go to him. So now, when someone brings the story of Moses and Aaron and Miriam to ignite fear in you, saying you should not speak, it is because you've not studied the scripture. Because there's more than one, two places where the Bible talks about we actually speaking. First, it is that the Bible says that we don't have the right to speak about what is happening outside of the church. It's in the scriptures that we are responsible to speaking and to talk about what is happening within us. Yeah. That means we don't talk about what is happening outside, but we can talk about what is happening inside. Number two, it says, of which Victor already said, that when someone comes to give a prophecy in Corinthians, that we have the right, people seated there have the right to judge what is being said. Number three, look at the story of Paul and Peter. Well, what did Paul do? Paul saw something that Peter was doing with that was wrong, and he spoke against it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, Pastor Sunday. Osaro is here. Yes, please. Hello, How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. You you see the topic of today? Two brothers with you there. Yes, sir. You see, when people have studied the scripture, yes, and they are talking. Now I now I now I know I know who I'm talking with. Yes. You see, when you're talking with people that are not studying scripture, at times you don't even know where to start from because the ignorance just goes out. <laughs> that when that when people have studied their Bible and they are talking, my heart here is just you know, my heart is beating and pumping fast because there is so much to really talk about. There is so much to talk about. Mm. Now, you see, Pastor Chris, I know what the Lord showed me about this guy. I know what the Lord showed to me. This guy is a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He is a deceiver. Now, first of all, he made that statement he made. Let's look at it very well. If you notice, the first time he used the word man of God, he used the man of God. That is a definite article. So he referred to himself. And Yes, he <laughs> referred to himself, the man of God. So that is a definite article. Hello, sir. Yeah, we're here. So when you see this is strong brainwashing, when he went when he threw that in there, he's portraying himself to the people that are listening to him that he is the ultimate when it comes to being a man of God, that he is the man of God. I see the untouchable. Yeah. So that he is unfallible. That he don't, so no wonder his brother can say that he is worshipable. Mm. 
So you guys have to understand what is going on here. So people listening, understand, people going to Christ and Basin, understand what is going on here. He, he is a deceiver. This was the same man that somebody asked, somebody wrote him a letter. The letter a simple letter to just ask, I am addicted to, to, to masturbation. What do you think I can do to get free from this? Simple question. The guy was not asking whether it is a sin or not. The <laughs> guy already feel condemned for doing it. Pastor Chris said, the reason you're asking the question is because you think masturbation is a sin. It is not sin. Who asked you that? So you are now God that decides what is sin and what is not sin. That is how, that is how dangerous the, 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 this guy is. Then another person wrote to him later and said, Pastor Chris, I can't believe you said that. This guy was trying, Pastor Chris was trying to explain this statement away. He couldn't use any scripture to back it up. He was saying some unreasonable stuff because he cannot admit that he is wrong. He cannot. First of all, let's look at what he said. He said, any man that speaks against a man of God, you bring in curses upon yourself and to your children. That means, hold on, if that is true, that means Pastor Chris' children, they are all cursed. Okay. You know why? Because his wife spoke against him. The wife. Exactly. <laughs> right? And if the, if, he say, if the wife spoke against would, him and the children are the children of his wife, it means that they Exactly. That are means cursed. they are cursed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, people look at what Paul did with Peter in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. When Peter was going wrong, Paul said, I withstood him to his face. He did it in the presence of everybody. And he told Peter, he said, are you not walking in wrong? Are you not walking in error? Seeing that you that was moving with the Gentiles, because you are in the presence of the of the Jews, now pretended like you are not. Peter was supposed to be their head, right? No. But Paul withstood him to his face in the presence of everybody. So, because of that, was Paul cursed? <laughs> this man needs to go study his Bible. He needs to go study his Bible. He should spend less time on perming his head and spend it on <laughs> studying the scripture. <laughs> People need to understand what is going on here. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be listening to people like, like this. People that think they are more important than, than God. Yeah. Let's look at another place in the scripture. What the Bible says about the Berean Christian in Acts chapter 17, mm. verse 11. The yes. Bible said, These we are more noble in that after Paul has taught them, they did not take Paul's word for it. They go back to search the scripture and see if it was true. How are you telling me that you want to present yourself to be infallible to the children of God? This is the same man. If you, if you listen to this video that you're showing, he, he spoke further. He said, men of God are hand-picked. He said, they cannot do anything against God. That is what he said. Uh -uh. If, you, if you play further. Yes. He said, he, he, said, he, said, he said, men of God are different from every other human being. He is an heretic. Now, look at this. Let him go study what happened to Moses. The Bible said that Moses was so close to God that God spoke to Moses face to face. And yes, Moses made, Moses made a mistake. Yeah. So, where is, he, where is he getting all these things from? Because he is so try, he's trying so hard to keep the people under him so that they can worship him. Yeah. So anybody listening to this, I'm glad that you are showing this. And when I heard you and my two brothers there talking about the scripture, opening it up, I am rejoicing because this is how we do it. This is how to do it. Let's step into that book. Let's use it. <laughs> Let's use it, you know, you know, to decipher things. Even God himself said, come now, let us reason together. Even God himself. Yes. <laughs> So Pastor Chris is telling his people, no, don't reason. 
Don't think. Anything I say is correct. Even God said, come, let us reason together in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 55. It's right there. So what is wrong here is a man that has been taken over by his own pride and his own self. And we know what happened. It was pride that brought Lucifer down. And these so-called men of God, they, they, they forget to understand that these are some of the things we fight against in this world. The fight of faith to make sure you are not corrupted by the things of this world. Hmm. These people have been so corrupted. So they don't hear what Paul was saying. When, when Paul said, I, I put my body under, I put myself under, lest after I have brought others to Christ, that I myself may not be a castaway. So they think they are the, they are all that. So everything he's saying there is so wrong. If you put it in scripture, it is just jargon, technical jargon. Garbage in, garbage out. And people are listening here, sitting down. I give you an example how bad it is with the churches in Nigeria. You know, Pastor Sunday, I told you I stopped going to any congregation gathering for many, many years. Yes, I know you organized, when, organized church. Exactly. When I first when 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 I first started doing this, my wife was panicking, and uh, I told her, "Listen, you don't understand." I tried to explain to her; she couldn't get it, and I knew she it was a matter of time she would get it because no, I knew because she wanted she was, the truth. She was brought up in Nigeria now. Wait till you explain. Yeah, she was brought up exactly, <laughs> mm. and I know, and I know. You see. There, there, there was a discussion we were having with, with, with them there. The reason why people are fighting against what you are doing now. Somebody was talking about a generation, this generation will not get it. I don't know. That is not it. It is not about generation. Yeah. It is not even about age demographics. It is not about all those things. The main reason is this thing you are doing is going to distinguish between the people that want the truth and people that don't want the truth. <laughs> it all it all boils down. Do you want the truth? <laughs> do you want to take it? Or do you don't want the truth? So everything is being spilled out there now for everybody to make a decision. Because if everything you are saying is contrary to the scripture, let them use the scripture to prove it. The truth is, if it was contrary to the scripture, I would have stopped calling in sins. I won't even talk to you. But every time I look at it, what you are doing is in line with the scripture. And I always say, yes, yeah, that is a man that is following the scripture right there. So anybody fighting against it because they don't want the truth. And if you reject the truth, the Bible says that God will turn you over to a lie. So this is what is going on. So this man, all he's saying is just pure lie. It's not biblical. There is nothing there. So people listening to him, they've been bamboozed. So yeah. they all have to go and listen to, to what you are saying and use it to correct themselves. Otherwise, they will be in trouble because this guy is leading many of the youths to hell. That was the revelation God showed to me about this guy. Wow. Many of the youths in Nigeria is leading them to hell. To hell fire. To hell fire because they were all dying in that revelation when he was speaking in tongues. They were all falling and dying. Wow. That is how dangerous he is. And this was many, many years ago, mm. way before all these things started showing about him. Wow. Then he was so slick and looked like I couldn't even believe you because I didn't say it out for many years. Mm. That is why I believe in that scripture that is in the book of Jude, where he said, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He said, for we know that men of corrupt mind which has been ordained to this purpose, we, we secretly creep in. Some of these people, the Lord already knows that they are going to end up like this. Hmm. Because of if the Lord, nothing goes without the Lord knowing. That is why many of them will not repent. I said it before. Because they, they don't stop that they shouldn't do. It is worse, sir. I'm so glad. Thank you so much to, to, you know, to, to the brothers with you. That God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank God bless you. So much. Wow. The next uh, 
Let's look at another one. Let's uh, see another example of how these people are brainwashing our people. How they are brainwashing people in the church. Uh, because there are so many examples of how these people just brainwash people. Brainwash and... Uh, uh, yeah. So let's see another one here. We already saw this one, right? Uh, okay, let's see another one. Okay, here we go. Everything that has been failing to move in your life, don't just say to see, but I want you to believe. Everything failing to move in your life, it is experiencing what's called the anointing of force. I receive. This anointing forces things which will not happen to begin to happen. I receive. I break every chain holding your life. I receive. I speak and I declare. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. Let every chain holding in you be broken right now. I Stop. Sit down. Do you notice what? is happening here this is another trick another method of repetition i mean of brainwashing and this method of brainwashing is called repetition 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 he's just saying they are saying this one and the same thing i receive i receive what is all that they are saying some words some people will be saying yes papa yes papa all those things just to make you look smaller to reduce you and to make you into to reduce you into a puppet. I receive, yes, I receive. What is all that? As are these two people, kindergarten children are the people they treat like this. But these people are treating grown-up people like kindergarten are being treated as if you know they are nothing, as if they are nobody, as if you know everything is just like so sad. People have been brainwashed. People have been damaged. I receive. I receive. Okay. Another one. Okay. Stop. You know, I told you about repetition, eh? As another method of brainwashing. You know, that's why Jesus said, don't go to a place where people, don't do like the Gentiles. It is the Gentiles that think that they are going to be heard by the numerous repetition of their repeating, repeating, repeating. He said, when you go to see your father to pray, you know, don't repeat, don't be repeating, thinking that you are going to, you know, you are going to be heard by the numerous incense and repetition of your something. So all those kind of things, magic, it is paganistic. So that's what we saw with Bushiri and come and see this one. This one is even worse in Nigeria because it's with Ngila or something, Joshua and Ngila. Because it's making people look as if they are demon possessed. Let's hear it. Let me hear that again. Abba Asha, Abba Asha, what was it? Is it demon? Huh? Come out here. What was it? Let's hear it shout again. So, Abba Asha, Abba Asha. What? You see, the old people, people just shouting and shouting some. Hey, my God. Where do we even start with this all this? Where do we start? So all this chanting, all this chanting, Abba Asha, Abba Asha. Is it Abba Asha? Where did he resurrect? <laughs> uh, what does this guy to say? Abba Asha, Abba Asha.
don't understand. Wait, is it a recorded sound? What? What? What could have been done to masses of people? You know, I never witnessed this thing before. Did you ever see this thing before? You saw it before? No. This thing is done? Yeah. You've seen this before? So this thing happens like this. You heard about it before? Oh, so what are these people doing to people? What, what could have been done to masses of people, to people's minds? To have made them become like animals. Even animals don't behave like this. What has been done to the minds of people? These people belong in jail. They have just reduced people to below humanity level. These people belong in prison. And this is the way they make people become animals, biomasses, people without will. Let's find out. Let's see, see if there are some calls or some callers could explain some of these things to us because I'm totally surprised. I can't believe what's happening here. Good evening, Dr. Sanjay Adilaja. Yes, sir. Good evening. Yes. Uh, God bless you. Uh, I want to uh, say something a little about... Hello. Yeah. I want to say something about the little about what the man of God said about do not uh, criticize the man of God. <laughs> And then, and then some of these things. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it happened. It happened to me. One day I went from Germany. I'm, my name is Jufiers. I'm calling from Germany. Okay. I went from Germany to Ghana for holidays, and then a friend invited me to a church, and the prophet of God came, so-called prophet of God, and said that God has prophesied that there are ten people here. Everybody should give him hundred hundred dollar. And why in this month God is going to shower his blessing on them? And I told my friend that this is common sense. At that moment, within a trickle of an eye, he will gather his three thousand dollars, mm. and he will tell you, "You wait in six months time, God will come and bless." Why don't he wait for six months time to get that money from God? <laughs> You see, the man of God, I just wake up and say, man of God, this is very simple. Ten people want to give hundred hundred dollars. That is a thousand dollars. And then six months time, God will, you pray God will bless them. Then pray in that six months time, God will give you that money. <laughs> because at that moment, you have got your thousand dollars. And this, should, this ten people should wait. <laughs> Look at Pastor, Pastor Sandy, I'm very serious. This is common sense. People now don't apply their common sense anymore in Africa concerning religion. <laughs> because what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it is not about people knowing the scriptures, as some people are saying. It's very good to know the scriptures. But when you know the scriptures, you don't apply common sense, you become a victim to all that. <laughs> Because the people now have to apply common sense. Very simple as that. Mm. If a man God of God tell you to fast, fasting is good. A man of God tell you to fast for one week, and you know you are on medication. Wow. You don't have to fast. Mm. You have to apply for your common sense. Yeah. The common sense is what people don't use these days as yeah. black people. Yeah. And so, some of the fear is the title. You know, in Africa, people like title because they use title to, to brainwash people, or yeah. they use title to belittle people. Yeah. Some man will just come out as a man of God, pastor. Everybody call him pastor. Within three weeks, he's a bishop. The <laughs> next three weeks, he's archbishop. 
the next day that he's apostle, <laughs> apostle bishop. How can somebody be apostle and they say that a bishop? Double. And then you add doctor to it. So apostle, bishop, doctor. So the moment that person speak, people don't question him. They say, hey, this man is a doctor. He's, and that's one of the brainwash. That is one of the brainwash. Titan. Titan. Hmm. So me, my, my, my place that all those who are watching this program and sharing, people should use their common sense. Yes. People should use their common sense critically. This yes. is. Thank you, Pastor Sandy. Beautiful. God bless you. Beautiful. <laughs> hello. hello. Who is calling from where? It's Kevin calling from uh, Sweden. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We appreciate everything you're doing. Thank we you. that are follow, we that are, we that are, are listening to to what you're teaching us. We are, yeah. we are really appreciate. You know, uh, you know. I I just want to comment on this uh, uh, Jericho pastor. Uh -huh. You know, the Birmingham pastor. Yes. You know that man has been. In fact, you know, sometimes when I listen to all these things, when I see all these things, I see God can give me power that. You know this power that I can appear in their in their in their in their room or in their hall, or whatever place they are preaching all this. You know to flog their kuboku. You know whip whip all their ass and their body. You know because it's so annoying. This what that man is doing. That is called fear factor. Yes, he's putting fear on these people in a way that that's why you see that most of them they cannot because now he's trying to make sure that his member don't believe him. Yeah. His member will always fight for him. Yeah. His member, you know, this is just winning the heart of these people. Do you understand me? These people, uh, these people need to be dealt with. They need to be dealt with. They need, you know, I don't know how. I, oh, I, I, I wish for Nigeria seriously. I wish for that country. Sometimes when I see things, I, things that are just going on in the church, I wish for them, and they are so blinded. They, they, they to the extent that I said that there was a time I had a conversation or a fight through social media with one of uh, this Pastor Chris uh, member. You understand me? Yeah. They are so they are so there to defend this man. This is a man that, that was a pastor that does, that does not have a wife. Yeah. A man of God that called himself. I don't know where, where it's written in the Bible that you have to perm your hair. Even your member and I follow you <laughs> and speak like you and perm your hair and perm their hair too. Where is it in the Bible? <laughs> eh? It's so annoying. Then all this one that are shouting, wah, 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 wah. why is it in the Bible? What is wrong with Nigeria? People are running on the floor or flying on the floor. You know, as if I don't understand. And women are even more dead. You see women, they're almost going naked. Yeah. What, what is wrong with Nigerians? What is what what what, what demon is working in them? <laughs> Oh my God! I really, I just feel for that country. But you see, this, that's religious, why, you, that's why you see that the country will never change. Religious because demons you, now. Religious uh -huh, demons. No, 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 no. And the cameraman is there, standing, filming. It's not, it's not falling. Why is it not falling? <laughs> huh? Those people are not falling. The pastor himself, okay, himself. The, the demon does not work in him. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, I just thank you. I just pray that my friends will open their eyes. Thank you very much for the good thing you're doing. And I, 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 I pray that we will continue to fight for this. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ah, the wow. I don't want to call that, no? Okay, let's go back to the, uh, to the hypnotizers. Uh, then we have uh, true repetition. The idea is another brainwasher we are going to show you right now, hypnotizer. Okay. God created the universe. He took a tithe. The Milky Way. God created the Milky Way. He took a tithe. The galaxy. Our galaxy. God created the galaxy. He took a tithe. Our solar system. God created our solar system. He took a tithe. Planet Earth. God created planet Earth. He took a tithe. <laughs> God created Israel, he took a tithe. Jerusalem, the capital city, the city of the place where God landed. God created Jerusalem, he took a tithe. The temple now, God created the temple now, he took a tithe. The temple. God created the temple, he took a tithe. The Holy of Holies, God created the Holy of Holies using man's hands. He took a tithe. The seat of mercy, the ark of the covenant. It was a pattern. 
what is it of this God created all species of being. He took a time, the family of God, which is comprised of angels, the living, and the dead in Christ. God created the family of God. He took a tithe, Israel. God created Israel, the Israelis, took a tithe, Levi. In another conjecture or in another reality, God created. Okay, things you must be aware of, I mean, you must be aware of if you don't want to be brainwashed. Okay, let's go to the notes. Make a go. <laughs> So number one, too much repetition of a set of words and actions. Let's go and see that one. Can you go and show me? Because you, I'm going to demonstrate to you each one, the point I make, and you have the video, you just tell me, so that people will see what we are talking about. Okay. So the repetition, we just finished it now. Isn't it not the one? Okay. Yeah. You want to start? Okay, yeah. She wants to start with uh, Bushiri. So the point, don't forget the point, though. You see, let's see the point again. The point, the first point I'm making here, the Milky Way. We will still get to the Milky Way, yes. <laughs> but it's not a Milky Way. Let's see the point first in the notes. You see, the point is this: too much repetition of a set of words or actions or and actions. Whenever you see pastors making you to repeat a set of words or actions. They are brainwashing you. So if you don't want to be brainwashed, go 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 to the topic. You see, if things you must be aware of, if you don't want to be brainwashed, one of the methods of brainwashing is they make you to be repeating a set. Oh no, everybody repeating it or actions. Now let's see the physical, practical demonstration of that. So, repetition of a set of words and actions. Let's see it happen here. Everything that has been failing to move in your life. Don't just say see, but I want you to believe. Everything so, failing to move you see, in your life. You see what he's saying, people? Anything that is, any, if nothing moves in your life, anything that has failed to move or that's not moving in your life, the only thing you need to do, just repeat one word receive that's magic so if i just begin to say receive receive i receive i receive everything that was not working in my life before we now begin to, <laughs> everything that is not working in my life will now begin to work just because i saved the word you said i should say i receive i receive i receive and but that is chanting that is repetition that god said we shouldn't even bother doing and it's not confession that is just that is magic let's say it is experiencing what is called the anointing of force. I receive. This anointing forces things which will not happen to begin to happen. I receive. I break every chain holding your life. I receive. I speak and I declare. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive. Let every chain holding in you. So all those kind of things. What is that is ritual? You know, when I used to go with my grandmother to the to the Ogun priest, it is the same thing. The Ogun priest will be saying some things, and we will be saying Ashe. They will be saying something. We'll be saying Ashe. We will be saying something. We'll be saying the same thing. You see, it's brainwashing. It's magic. So when people begin to make you repeat a set of words and a set of actions like that, they want to brainwash you. Let's see another one here. So, you see all those shouting of, you have to repeat from the beginning. Abba Asha, Abba Asha, Abba Asha, Abba Asha, Abba Asha. They will be telling people that that is what will make. So in some people it is that diga diga diga. What do they say? Agadaga. I think it's agadaga, 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 or something. Something similar to that. It is Aneshe, Paul Aneshe. Is it what is what does he say there? Agadaga, 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 agadaga. Everybody say agadaga, 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 agadaga. 
I said, which doctor train all of them? He's like, each, some witch doctor, all of them have their witch doctor's phrases. That one is, I received. This one is, and then this one is Abash, Abba Acha, Abba Acha. Which, let's, let's hear the thing again. <laughs> Because, no, is it not brainwashing? What they, they have turned the people to animals. Okay. Now they are repeating another one. Fire, fire, walk for. So that will resolve all my problem. So there is something wrong here. They, I bet there is a formula. Maybe they have their, everybody have their own babalawo and they are giving them some incantations to be saying. You see, this is part of the brainwashing. Too much repetition of a set of words and action is a way to brainwash you. See what the Bible says about it. Matthew 6, 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions, you see. Don't do these things. Don't do these things. These things are not necessary. They are not scriptural. They are not biblical. They are not godly. They are not for the children of God. Do not use vain repetitions. You don't need to use these vain repetitions. Do not use vain repetitions. As the heathen do. You see, Gentiles do. It is the Gentiles that re do vain repetitions like this. For the thing that they will be heard for their many words. Let's see the Abba Asha. Is that not what they are doing? The thing they will be heard for their many words. This is exactly what they are doing here in this church. <laughs> Is it not what Jesus said we shouldn't do? I mean, this looks paganism. It looks paganistic. This is exactly what Jesus said. Don't do it because it's paganistic. Okay, go ahead. Spy, the, another thing they do to brainwash people, uh -huh. another thing they do to brainwash people is they make people, members of the church, to spy on each other. Spying on peers and reporting misdeeds to the leadership. We are going to show you also an, a, a, another, another example of that one too. Because they make you, they make you, they kind of reward you for spying on another members of the church, for reporting other members of the church. They encourage betrayal among their midst. So that you, who is the betrayer, who is betraying your brethren, you are now the one that has been awarded or rewarded or encouraged. Let's look at the, another example of that one. Amen. It means your mother needs fasting and prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This sister. Yeah. What happened? Eh? You are tired. You are tired. Eh? Nothing. Nothing. You are tired. Sorry. Eh? Sorry. Amen. I can give you coffee to drink. You want to take coffee? Eh? No, sir. You want to take coffee? No, sir. What happened? Why did I sleep? You said nothing. There was no reason why you are sleeping now. Is that that you are tired? Eh? You know better? Wallahi, if 
this look again. You will remain standing with me there till we close. You stand by my side there. Anybody sleeping by your side, do like this so that we come and see the person. So many hands are up here. See you, you break your leg for nothing, sister. Your leg will break for nothing. For nothing. Eh? Who again? Who sleep there? Anybody that sleep by your side, sound down for me. For, 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 for. Slap and go away. You know, it's no wickedness. You are helping the person to be awake. Be your brother's keeper. Do something that will make the person be awake. Go to the first to the service finish. You can't sleep. Slap and go away. <laughs> Is that military HMT like our own? <laughs> is it military regime or is it uh it's night vision now? People are it's at night, people are sleeping. Of course they are sleeping because it's late. I mean it's night, people are coming after work. And being there all night, not sleeping is tough. But you report your brother, report each other. You see, making people to report each other is the second point we are making. But this one is even small. Go to Chris Oyakilome's church. You know, the whole system is set up like a, like a court. Anything you do, they know. They get, they get to headquarters. That is the one that is worse. And that's the one I'm talking about here. They spy, they spy on people, on members of the church, reporting their misdeeds to the... Even not misdeeds, though. If you just come and watch this thing, they say you usually go and watch, they will report you. Mm -hmm. Psalm 458, verse 3, says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. That's another thing that pastors in Nigeria do. They brainwash you through lies. And that is wickedness. You know, they are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born. They are people of lies, deception. So beware when you know that your pastor is always telling lies. It's always, okay, like the one we saw now about, uh, let's see the live one now. The, you know, is it milky, milky something? You know, why should you connect milky mix to light to tight? Which tight? That's a lie. So when you see that pastors are lying to, you know, to put in their reputation or the one that say you will die if you don't pay tight, that's not also lie now. You have examples. Maybe they show me the videos. You find me other videos of lie. God created the universe. He took a tithe. The Milky Way. No, wait, wait, wait. God created the Milky Way. Who told you that that is a tithe? Is it not a lie? You see, when pastors begin to lie to justify their position, when pastors begin to tell lies to just, you know, prove a point, that is serious, yeah? The Milky Way. God created the Milky Way. He took a tithe, the galaxy, our galaxy. God created the galaxy. He took a tithe, our solar system. God created our solar system. He took a tithe, planet Earth. So, it, it is all, it's not even correct. The logic and the, the order by, by which he puts it, he has messed it up. His galaxy is bigger than the Milky Way. And he say the galaxy, it comes from Milky Way. It's not even true. The, all the things he's saying is they are not even factual. They are not even correct. I'm, even me, I'm not a, a geologist or geographer, geographist or whatever. Yeah, and I, or a physicist. But even me, I know that everything he says is wrong. It's just confusing people through lies. Just to make a point that, yes, yeah, tight, tight, tight. Okay, let me, let's hear the guy finish. Don't praise him. Paradise, he took a tie. He's with the Fertile Crescent. He's with <laughs> the He took a tie. Jerusalem, the capital city, the city of David. Basically, where God landed. Right, well, God, I think we are through with it. We'll come back to him later on. There's a, he's using two tricks at the same time. The one is lie, but the other one is gibberish. We're going to come back to that gibberish one later on. But let's see other lies that people like. So just for you to see how pastors 
are using lies and deception to brainwash. Like this, and that one here. Only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have anybody to go back. Oh. Start from, is that the place that I don't get it in the beginning? For you to have faith, I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have anybody to go back. Oh Lord, open the windows of heaven over everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. No matter how many put your hands together. Stop. Stop. You, you see the lie. People just come up with lies and brainwash people with lies. It won't open heaven over. Or anybody who is not it, who is not a tighter. So Dan Gute is a tighter. Bill Gates is a tighter. Mark Zuckerberg is a tighter. All right. Warren Buffett is a tighter. Richard Branson is a tighter. Okay, go ahead. You know, as young people, we join hands here. We have to come to the front. If you, if all this, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. We say God open the window. There's no way. Open the window. Is that this just cannot be broken? I have my faith, so I cannot deny myself. I want to who said it, I can't be breaking it. Oh God, for this woman, open the window. He said, oh son, I won't. The whole church is praying. He said, the whole church will be fasting for one year. I won't. Tell that woman, be a tighter. He said, he, he has nothing. He has nothing. Then I have nothing for him. It's an interesting word. Please take responsibility. You see what they say? If a woman says she has nothing, God will tell the woman, I have nothing for you. No. God is the one that remembers the poor. In fact, he's a God of the widows and the orphans. He remembers the poor. He cares for the poor. In fact, the poor, eh, they don't even need to open their mouth. God has had, had and answered them. So that's using lie to brainwash people and hypnotize people. Let's see another one of those examples of using lie to brainwash people. She had sought God. She had done many things. One day she took her whole salary. She worked with an oil company. She took her whole salary, brought it to the altar, and gave it to the Lord. Then every month, Instead of paying 10% tight, she began to pay 20%. We don't have time. I know there are those who are telling you not to, not to give your tight. Don't listen to them. Oh. They won't kill you. You go die quick. Oh. Stop. You know, that's a lie. Why would you tell them that they, you, you know, they won't kill you if you don't pay your tight? If, if you don't pay your tight, they won't kill you? You go die quick. You go die fight fast. You go die quick, oh, because you don't pay your tithe. The in the countries where the highest, no, no, no what do you call it? lifespan or life expectancy, in Europe, yeah, the life expectancy is do almost double of that of Nigeria, where they are paying tithe. They, they die there like chicken, and here where they don't pay tithe, life expectancy is just is just everywhere. All the countries where they are not paying tithe, that's where they have life expectancy. They are not dying. They won't die. Safe. Some of them won't die. They don't want. They can't die. But here, where you don't want to die, that's where you are dying with all your tithing, because it doesn't follow. Make I go back to my notes. Because those things are based on lies. So that's what I'm saying. Our pastors in Africa now use lies to to brainwash people. They go astray. I mean, the, the wicked are in straight from the wombs. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. They create dependency by alternating rewards and punishment for the same behavior. This is another thing they do. They, they you know, so, you know they, they create dependency on people. Sometimes they will say, you, you know, you do something that deserves punishment. Some they will punish, some they will not punish. 
Sometimes they will say, oh, do this, you'll get reward. Some will be rewarded, some will not be rewarded. They alternate rewards and punishment for the same behavior. Some people who even do something that is bad, they reward them. Other people do something that is good, they punish them. This is what is happening in African churches. You think you are doing something good, but they will punish you for it. Who told you to do it? Why did you do it? They punish you. The ones that are doing something bad, they promote them. This is the kind, this is the way manipulative system and brainwashing system work. Just the same way they will tell you the truth or will preach the truth to you 10%, 90% lie. So you so when you say, ah, but what about they say, oh, but we preach that also. But the one that will remain with you is the 90% that they preach lie. Okay. Then they have unpredictable behaviors by pastors and leaders, which is a sign of abuse. Unpredictable behaviors. We have a video of that. So when you cannot, you know, the, you, unpredictable, you, you, cannot, you cannot tell of the mood of your pastor. The mood of your pastor is changing left and right. Today, your pastor is angry you, if you do this. The other time, he's laughing. The other time, he's happy. The other time, he's not happy. You cannot predict them. So um, um, unpredictable behavior of pastors and leaders, that's a way to keep you panicking so that you will be panicked. You will not know, ah, can I approach Ghana? Can I come to Ghana? He, he, he will be angry. He will be angry. So it's for you to, to keep you disbalanced so that you will not be able to predict them. That is why they, they, they behave like that. Unpredictable. Can you show me that note again? Unpredictable behavior of a leader. It's a way of brainwashing you and keeping you as a slave. Let's see. You see, unpredictable behavior by pastors and leaders is a sign of an abuser. It's a mind game. This is one of the mind games they play. Let's see an example of that here. Um, you are a foul Again now. I'm not a witch. I'm a witch for Jesus. What? I'm my own witch is for Jesus. And I'm using a foul devil. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I'm talking to? Foul devil. Where are you from? the kind of behavior you will see all these pastors, you know, it's a sign of an abuser. Abusers are people that you cannot predict their behaviors. They are not predictable, you know, they are, you know, this is a sign of an abuser. They change, they behave anyhow. Okay, go ahead. Also, brainwashers often engage in long, boring, convoluted species. I want you to see some of those convoluted speeches here. I said that we'll come back to that guy. That's the kind of thing they do. Long, boring, convoluted speeches. Gimericks. Gimericks or gimericks. Yeah, gibberish. Yeah, gibberish, gibberish. Let's go back to, let, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the point I meant so that they will see. You see, brainwashers. That's the sign of a brainwasher. They often engage in boring, con convoluted speeches. Long, long, you know, grammar. They will speak grammar. Oh, long, boring, convoluted speeches. Let's see the example of that one here. Yeah, here we go. God created the universe. He took a tithe. The Milky Way. God created the Milky Way. He took a tithe. The galaxy, our galaxy. 
God created the galaxy. He took a time. Our solar system. God created our solar system. He took a time. Planet Earth. God created planet Earth. He took a time. Israel. The fertile crescent. Israel. God created Israel. He took a time. Jerusalem. The capital city. The city of David. The place where God landed. God created Jerusalem. He took a time. The temple now. God created the temple now. He took a time. The temple. God created the temple. He took a time. The Holy of Holies. God created the Holy of Holies using man's hands. He took a time. The seat of mercy. The ark of the covenant. It was a pattern of the seat of mercy in heaven. God created all species of being. He took a time. The family of God, which is comprised of angels, the living, and the dead in Christ. God created the family of God. He took a tithe. Israel. God created Israel. He's raised. To the tithe. Levi. In another conjecture or in another reality, God created humanity. He took a tithe. The church. <laughs> God created the church, took a time. The eldership, God created the eldership, took a time. The apostle, God created the church, took the head of the church, Christ, took another time. Confucianist. This one is called Confucian mechanism or Confucian technology. This is all Confucianism. Confucian technology. I mean, I don't think they have perfected the act, the act of Confucian and confusing. Confusing everybody, just messing everybody up with their long, stretched out, confused species that you do not. By the time you they end, eh, the only thing, the only conclusion you come to is that ah, this man is so smart. You don't understand anything. You just come to the conclusion that ah, this man is <laughs> this man is this man is too bad. So this guy is tough. That's what they want. <laughs> The whole idea is to make them to, to, to assume that to just give up and say, "Yeah, you are I'm your own son, and you don't need to speak again. Just let me go home." <laughs> Let's see another long confusion. This kind of talks like that. Too. You walk into a place and they give you solution. Some of you walk to a place and they tell you this is this. They not tell you go and buy incense. You buy incense. What was your problem? Your business was bad. Your business was going through oppression. So you buy the incense. After you burn the incense, your business now started prospering. You say, hey, there is power in this thing. No. What has happened to you is this. The demon that oppresses your business, the demon from the incense is higher. So you are just told the demon that oppresses your business. Say, please, stop oppressing his business. Oppress his marriage. So that is why you see business will now rise, marriage is going down. He said, no, leave, leave his business, oppress his health. Now, the man's business is doing well, but he's always going to the hospital. Because Satan is a mathematician. He will do things and, and, you, you... and you are master Confucianist. <laughs> master Confucianist. Let's begin to hear. Let's continue. Believe that this thing that's introduced to you is powerful. So you see that area of your life getting solution, but your that area, the problem has compounded. Am I talking to somebody here? So many, there are people today who are decisive. What's the first kind of witchcraft? Eh? Number two? Number three? Then number four is forced witchcraft. What is okay? What conclusion are you supposed to come to at the end of that or those orations? Just to confuse you, just to mess up your mind. <laughs> so that by the time you go out, you say, Ah, my pastor is smart. And you say, That man, no word, though. That man, no grammar. So this is what they do. They brainwash you. These are these are signs of brainwashers. They often engage in long, boring, convoluted speeches. 
These people humiliate you. That's another thing they do. They humiliate you and put fear in you through verbal abuse, criticism, insults. Show me the video where he brought out the husband and wife and they were on their, their knees. He was humiliating them. I don't know if you people remember that. You know, that is a trick. That is a, uh, a, a mechanism, a strategy that all these people use. They always do that. Sometimes I heard that the pastors slap their secretaries, that they beat their assistant pastors, slap their assistant pastors, mess them up, uh, you know, humiliate people in public, make, you know, shame people in public, disgrace people on the stage, uh, make them fall on their knees, you know, make them, you know, crawl, make them lie down, make them, you know, beat at their assistant pastors, you know, uh, and those people will still be saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, as if they have removed their brain and they have, they have put water instead of brain inside of the head, you know, so they just humiliate them uh, and so that others will fear, so that others will fear, and that's the kind of thing that is happening in Africa all the time, so this one, but, you know, yeah, let, let's see one of those examples here. We saw as a deterrent to everyone. Everything is written on this man that is an abuser. Everything is just black and white. Everything is just so colorfully written upon this man. He's an abuser. He's a brainwasher. He's an abuser. I don't want, if you want, you can go and look at the whole video. But it is clear. That's just an example of another person that is using, you know, humiliation. This is the what we're talking about. They use humiliation. They, they, they humiliate people. They put fear in people. They use verbal abuse, attack, criticism to break you. That's another way they try to, you know, they brainwash you. Brainwashers never allow for constructive criticism on their... You, so you, they can criticize you and break you, but you cannot criticize them. No criticism of their new doctrine, no questioning of their doctrines, just like uh, yeah, Chris was saying, just like uh, uh, Osaro says, uh, said about Chris, that men of God are special breed or something, that they cannot do anything wrong. They cannot, you cannot question them. You know, those are the kind of things we are talking about. They use, uh, you cannot criticize them, you cannot question them. They make themselves infallible. They put themselves in a place where you cannot throw anything at them. Let's see an example of that. I like to speak on the power of the child. Some bunch of yo-yo somewhere should not determine what we believe. Some guy who beats his wife, who beats his wife, throws her out, throws her, his children out of the house should not determine what we believe. Not only does he beat his wife, his son was trying to defend her, he broke his own son's knees. He drinks alcohol, sleeps with women, and he's trying to preach to preachers. He said, shut up and let's speak. Tonight, I came with the word of truth. 
You say, this is bullying, you say. They don't want you to criticize them. If you criticize them, they bully you. They bully you. They, you cannot challenge them. If you challenge them, you see the way they, that, that guy is trying to bully uh, that the freeze. Bully him into submission. Those are the kind of was the signs of uh, brainwashers and abusers we are talking about. So they don't allow you to criticize them or their new doctrines. They use threats to silence their followers. E.g., touch not my anointed. That's where Chris comes in now. Loyal and disloyal. Rebel and rebellion. Rebel and rebellion. That's what they call people. They say you are disloyal. They say you are a rebel. They say you are, uh, you know, this and that. So they, they say, you know, they, they, they put you, they put name on you that you are a rebel. You are you know, disobedient. You are this. They make you look bad. And that is because uh, they, you know, that's the point we're making. They are abusers and brainwashers themselves. Let's see another example here. I understand that uh, some some media uh, artists, particularly in Nigeria and maybe in South Africa, you know, there's some of them who will be writing. So you got the picture. Jesus, you cannot compare ourselves to Jesus. He's the only one who is perfect. But none of us is perfect. You want to tell me you are perfect? None of us is perfect. All of us are fallible. Why are you saying? Now, wow. So, you see, this is the another problem people make. They make themselves look invincible. Invincible, that is, they are, they are like infallible. They are <laughs> almost rock of ages. They use threat to silence their followers. Touch no man, no identity. <laughs> that Chris is the sheep of that. Loyal and disloyal. Rebel and rebellion. They use punitive, punitive measures against their leaders. You know, they are junior leaders. They are leaders in church and junior ministers. Like small rewards for desired behaviors and punishment for unwanted behaviors. They try to set up system of rewarding. That is also a way of brainwashing to keep you faithful. And most of the people who are not living Christian church, uh, who are in their staff, is because of the, because they are giving them money. They are giving them bribes. They are bribing them. So they set up a system of rewards so that you are not staying there because of truth or because of God, but because of the manipulative bribing they have given to you. They have bribed you. Second Peter 2, 12 to 15 says, but these, like these people, these, these brainwashers, like natural brute, you see, they're like brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed. <laughs> he said, Peter is tough. That's a strong language. He said they are like brutes. Like they are like, they are like beasts. This, he said they are supposed to be... You know, not, they are not, it's not enough to just criticize them. All. The only thing I'm doing is just criticizing. But look at what Peter said should be done to them. They should be caught and they should be destroyed. He's talking about these people. They speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who can't eat pleasure to carouse in the daytime. That's what they are doing. They are taking advantage of people. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you. you know, they feast with their members on one hand, but on the other hand, they are carousing in their own deceptions having eyes full of adultery and that cannot and that cannot cease from sin. They cannot cease from sin. Enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. A lot of these leaders, they are already, this is how God sees them. They are forsaking the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bear, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. That's what we see in our churches today. These leaders love the wages of unrighteousness. It is always one man leadership. An all powerful leader who decides everything. That's what Chris was saying. We are untouchable. We are servants of God. We are this, we are that. That's a sign of an abuser, of brainwasher. These poor victims, church members, 
uh, these poor victims called church members are usually ignorant of what happens next in the church and in their life directions. So they just blindly follow these people. In most brainwashing techniques, we see that it is at the stage of leniency and opportunity that the victims mostly begin to cooperate with the captor. Because that's when they say, oh, leniency, oh, we are giving you opportunity. Oh, you are going to get a job here. Oh, we are going to promote you. Oh, you are going to start a branch. Oh, you know, stage of leniency and opportunity. We already spoke about that. Mm -hmm. However, in the case of church mind control, the victims are willing, particip willing participants in their own destruction from the world go. Can you believe it? So they are willing participants in their own destruction. They cooperate with these men, willingly submit themselves to them because they believe that the man of God is helping them. They cooperate with the leader from the very start or at least very shortly after their salvation. They believe they are making their own decisions. Unfortunately, when people believe that there is no forcing or coercing, coercion or manipulation used against them, they are much more committed to those predators and churches and the decisions and their decisions last longer because they think that these pastors are working for their interest. So they willingly submit themselves and it's much more difficult to, to, to you know, to deliver them because they are not questioning anything. This means that in the church, the whole process of mind control can actually go much more quickly than when there is force and pain and suffering involved, you know, in the church because it's like people are submitting their willpower. They are submitting their, their authority. Of, they don't question anything. They are willing participants. They are willing participants. But when they force you, when they beat you, like in prison or things, you know that, okay, you have to get out. You have to fight. But here, it's so subtle that people don't even suspect that they have been hypnotized and brainwashed. Second Peter 2, 17 to 20. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest. So these pastors, a lot of these pastors are wells without water, clouds without wind, for whom is you know, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's what God is saying. That's what Peter is saying. That is hell. It means hell. Blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they are law through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Yep. They live in error. While they promise them liberty, they promise people liberty, but they themselves are slaves to corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Because these people themselves are in slavery. wondering what is happening here you see it looks like uh it looks like mmm kind of celebration right multiple marketing what is happening here they call it love world awards and love world awards these are south africans mainly these are people who are giving the most to the church who give the most money because people have been brainwashed they trust them they trust in the, in the man they they believe the lies and they are giving all the money and then they are giving them rewards, let's see. So, 
You see what is happening? You give like a million dollars, maybe or five hundred thousand or five million, no, fifty thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar. But they give you a certificate and a and a, a plaque, plaque that is costing maybe ten dollars or twenty dollars, maybe hundred dollars, and you are rejoicing and jumping because they, your your pension money has been taken. Your, you know, your, your, your something for your retirement, some money has been taken. The money for your, you know, you see all of them wearing some stars on their breast. You see, those are their stars. It's like MLM. It's, it's, not, it's not the kingdom. Jesus said, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Nobody should know, you know. He's saying, when the rich people come, don't put them aside. Don't make them get special privileges. Don't let them, them sit somewhere special. Don't treat, no special privileges in the kingdom. No special something, you know. But MLM is taking over the church. The, the world, the spirit of the world has hijacked. Mammon, it's all about mammon. It's not about uh, the church anymore. Yep. <laughs> These are the things they are using to brainwash people. South Africans are so much in love with Chris Oyakilome and and uh, and Joshua, especially you know because of their miracles. Because people are deceived. That's why Jesus said, "Don't follow after miracles." You know, when you begin to follow after miracles, you are in trouble. Miracles, you will be deceived because you are supposed to follow after principles, after truth, not after miracles. Let's see another one here. Tina. The most effective church office organization award in the year 2015 goes to the Believers Love Award International Office Charlotte United States of America. So this is the elite, elite church. So what, what should the ordinary members be feeling? What should ordinary members be feeling? Let's keep on watching.
So what people so wait, wait, wait. Now, what these people don't know is that this is a method of brainwashing. Not just for these people themselves, but for their members too. People are being brainwashed. This is a system of brainwashing. But it is unscriptural. Because some people might say, what is wrong with this? Now, we are going to tell you now what is wrong with it on the basis of the Bible soon. Well, let's, let's continue watching first. Totally MLM, MLM spirit, MLM, Tosca, MLM. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Now let's let's check and see why is it wrong? Is it just because it is MLM? No. Let's check the Bible. Let's see the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says about it. It's not just brainwashing. It's not just hypno I mean, hypnotizing and brainwashing. But let's see what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 12, 20 to 26 says, But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, less honorable, on this we bestow greater honor. So who should be receiving honor? The weak, the vulnerable, and the less honorable. Okay? And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. Greater. But our presentable, you know, those are the big ones, the successful parts, have no need. They don't have need. For these recognitions. But God promised the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. Not to the ones who are already successful, but to the ones who lack success. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. The same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. That's why you honor the weakest, not the strongest. This is so this these are all methods of brainwashing that you should be aware of. This is only in case of people who have been taught critical thinking, the ability to doubt everything. Only those people can be able to uh, understand what's going on and be able to escape from distance. When people talk about cults and brainwashing te techniques and technology, this is what we are talking about. Why there is no school for psychopaths, cult leaders, or manipulators, they are constantly learning from each other. 
<laughs> and from the world use their Bible schools to brainwash people. They use new believers' classes, ministers' conferences, etc., to expand their practices. Second Peter 2 22 says, But it has happened to them according to the true proverb a dog returns to his own vomit because they are returning to the practices of the world. And a soul having washed to her wallowing in the mind. In fact, cult leaders often attend live teachings like this, like my own, so they will know which tricks they have de we have detected, so as to appear normal to their followers, so they change. Cult and sect thrive in times of crisis. When there is crisis, poverty, where there is poverty, lack, challenges, and instability. Education about brainwashing techniques and mind control techniques actually work. It's vital if we, I mean, of how you no know, education about how brainwashing techniques and mind control techniques work is vital if we are to stop cults and psychopaths from destroying our society. Good evening, Jesse. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Tope, calling from Atlanta. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate you for what you have been doing and what you've been doing concerning this. Your program is really, really, uh, I don't know. I feel sober today, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm very, very sober. Apart from the topic you are uh, dealing with today, yeah, I think I want to tell everybody on this platform before they come to the platform to start making some uh, derogatory remark and all those stuff. They should first of all go and look for who is uh, DSC first, because that is very very important. I think they need to go back and start watching some of your video. Uh, you, I think you have thousand and one of these of that uh, video in your the on the internet that people can watch. Yeah, and uh, I've been privileged to watch your live videos that you have been doing, and I've been privileged to watch all the series you've been putting up on the uh, on the platform, which uh, give me an insight into who you are and what you really are, and what you are doing. Even though I may mean, not agree hundred percent with everything you are bringing up, but at the same time, you see, you have a foundation for what you are doing, and that is very, very, very important. You see, most of the uh, are you, can you hear me? Yeah, very well, very well. Do you know the reason why we get ourselves into this mess in Nigeria? And I'm going to tell you for, so that you can understand why we are really in this real mess. And it's because of the uh, people, those who get involved in the church. When they are ordinary members, they are so innocent and they are so gullible, they just follow directives. But as soon as they are promoted to the rank of uh, assistant pastor, pastor, and now they are in the highest level of the, and they see the atrocity that those geos, uh, pastors, senior pastors, and others are committing, then the next thing they will do is to go out of the church, if they, as well if they have one gift or the other, and they will go and replicate the reason, those things that they saw in those places they will now go out and replicate it. They will start it the same way because those Jews are good. Uh, they, 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 they did it and nothing happens to them. Um, they are okay, but they are they were they, they saw all these things that they are doing and they know if something is wrong. And I want people to go and watch it too. Uh, that is the, the, the lecture you give as far back as 2008. 2008 with the RCCG, uh, I don't know whether it's in America or somewhere, the leader, uh, leadership training that you did. In America, yeah. I think it's in America. And you brought this young boy and young girl and they were trying to get... That is what real testimony is. But you see, with that, at that, I concluded that I don't think there is real Christianity in Nigeria or in Africa, as well. the way they were handling it, the way they were doing it, I don't think so. I'm very, very, you know, you, I just feel sad that we, a lot of people have gone through this mess and they cannot even, most of them cannot even come out of it. That's the point I've been trying to make, that what we have is not Christianity. I'm trying, that's yeah. why I'm doing everything yeah. I'm doing. It? Man of, uh, I, I'm not, I told you I'm not going to be calling you man of God. I'll be calling you DSC because it's more easier for me, for, for, for me to relate with. You see, the mess these so-called pastors 
self-proclaimed pastor. Most of them are self-proclaimed pastor. They don't even know anything about what it is to even have a church. Talk less of even having a congregation that is up to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And now, what brought people to church is quite different, and that is what they now pray on. It is because of the calamity and the problem that most people you know, lead them to church. That's the reason what they, they are now praying on those things. If you don't have a husband, if you don't have a wife, if you don't have this, evil. And now, when I now saw that your leadership training, and I saw what uh, the real, and I can now see it, and I see Jesus Christ. When are we going to get to this? Point. When are people going to realize that you are the essence of Christianity is to love your neighbor? You know, in Christian in, in Nigeria, when you are a prostitute, a prostitute, they stigmatize you. When you have HIV aid, all you want to call the thought is a cause for somebody to even be sick. You understand? And that is what they believe. If you are sick in the church. The first thing they will tell you is that, oh, maybe you have done something wrong. That's why you are sick. They don't know that this thing is a natural thing that happens all over the place. They cannot even admit drug addict into the church. That's wow. how bad it is. When yeah. they see you as a drug addict, they say, oh, that one is life is finished. Don't even associate with him. And that is why the churches we have in Africa is for the elites. Those who are okay. Now, everything that they now do is programmed and based on those who are okay, because it's only those who are okay that will come and give their own testimony, the testimony of what people want to hear, the testimony of what God has done to them. You know, it is not meant for the layman. And that is why I said I feel so bad today, and I will just cry in my soul. Tears of Bring your voice up again. We are losing your voice. Hello? Yeah. I said, uh, when I now listen to that and I saw, I said, oh, people just need to go and be watching some of your video and understand where you are coming from. The passion that, the reason, you've been, this is not a day, this is not something you just woke up in a day and you started putting out, as, as, as so many of them did, they just keep running their mouth all over the place. And when I understand the difference between the pulpit, Christianity, and the real Christianity, you know, this, you know, we were talking about that thing. I was just, you know, Pastor, I don't know what to say. I don't know, I'm sad because I discovered that my people are lost. They are lost in the wilderness. And only, I don't know who, but I think God is going to raise an army to, to, to rescue my people from this wilderness. You know, I was, you know, for the past five years, I was doing this foundation. And I went to Nigeria. Every morning I make in America, I take it to Nigeria. Okay. This thank you so much. I think that's all. For okay, me. okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. you see, all these things these people are doing here. See what these people are doing. It's just brainwashing. Now, what this brother is saying is that's why I said that we need to go and watch my videos. Go watch the if you have not watched my old messages from YouTube or from the old you know you don't know who Pastor Sunday is if you have not even watched two hundred messages or listened to two hundred messages of Pastor Sunday I said don't quote me oh don't say you know me oh because you don't know me and don't say you you follow Pastor Pastor Sunday don't quote because you will you will get something wrong you need to have listened to at least two hundred messages to be able to know where I'm coming from. Yeah. If, Hello. Good evening, good evening, DSA. Good evening, DSA. Good evening. Who is calling from where? Yeah. Um, Kristen calling from London. Yes, please. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief because I know I have um, just three minutes. Um, yeah, uh, just like the last caller said, um, the, 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 the message you gave in 2008, um, I saw the message and um, I've been sharing the message online, especially to members of ROCCG, so that they can actually see that you are not against their pastor. You are not against um, um, Adeboye. It is something you've been saying since, um, for, for so long. Now, coming down to the issue of, to, coming down to the issue of today, um, honestly speaking, um, I was going through a couple of your messages. Um, I think the ones, the thinking series, 
Yeah. And um, yeah, and today I listened to two of them. Uh, the first one is the danger of shallow mindedness. Yeah. And the second one is the benefit of um, analytical thinking. Yeah. And honestly, DSA, um, it just dawned on me, forgive my language. Um, I think Africa, uh, Africans and Africa, we are in deep shit. Um, <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I say that because the, the problem we have, not just in the church alone, but as a nation, as a race, is the fact that we don't know the act of thinking. We don't think. That is the basic problem we have now, in Christian, our university. Christian, Christian, will you now agree yeah. with my appeal to people to go and listen to as many of those my messages as possible? Do you now know so, why? Sir, Honestly, honestly, because what I do now, I just go on YouTube, take it, uh, uh, each of the messages, I forward it on Facebook, I forward it into people's um, messenger, I forward it on WhatsApp. I'm just spreading the message because they're really, really, because even all the people who come online to, to say all sorts of rubbish, I, I just go to the YouTube message, pick some of the message, and I send to them. I say, please sit down and watch this before you come on air and show uh, and display your stupidity because honestly speaking after going through that message i honestly I, I i was bleeding in my heart because i know that is where our problem lies if we are a thinking race if if somebody if our forefathers our parents had taught us the act of thinking we will not find ourselves in the mess that we find ourselves today. It's just like going back to going back to the galaxy pastor, the guy that was talking <laughs> about time from the galaxy and whatever. It's it's so so <laughs> stupid. Honestly speaking, the very first time I saw that uh, uh, clip, I was mad. Why? Because I cannot believe that intelligent people will sit down under such a message, and nobody can challenge him. For Christ's sake, they should know. I don't know if what school he went to. He <laughs> said God created the galaxy and took a tie, the Mickey Way. And nobody told him that a Mickey Way is also a galaxy. <laughs> the Mickey Way is just our own galaxy where that contains our planet. Where, yeah, where so, the Earth is. Exactly. He just he was just talking stupid and he's dissing out stupid words from his mouth and people sat down listening to him simply because nobody has taught us to think. We are not aware of ourselves. We are not aware of what we do. We are not aware of the words that we hear. And it's so painful. It's so painful. And that's why I say, by God's grace, I hope that when you come down to Nigeria, by God's grace, I think what you need is a leadership institute where you will train people to think, train people to become leaders. Teach them what it really means to be a Christian. Because that same clip, I saw it, and I saw the testimonies that the people you brought to, I think it was in North America, and they were giving testimonies. A, a girl of 19 years, a boy of how many years, have taught tens of thousands of lives. That is true Christianity. We've lost it completely in Africa. We've completely lost it. And it's so painful that our so-called geos, our so-called bishops, who at least know the truth, we deliberately be leading people astray. It's so, so, so painful. It's so painful. Yes, I just believe, um, before I go, I just truly believe in my spirit that the task that God has given to you, honestly speaking, I think it is your real calling. I think what you have done all this year is just a preparation. I think God was preparing you for the continent of Africa. And that's why he took you out. Because I don't understand how people will hear your words, hear your message, and will still come on air and condemn you. Only those who love the truth can listen to you. And our prayer is that God will put the love of the truth in the heart of every Nigerian, every Africa, so that when they hear the truth, they are, the, the Bible says that the seen eye and the hearing ear, the Lord has made them both. So it is God that will 
give them ears to hear. And that should be our prayers, that God will give them ears to hear. So this, I just want, I, I honestly, I pray for you every day. I just want to thank you for the work that you have done. You see, your YouTube is a gold mine. Honestly, people don't understand. It's a yeah. gold mine. People, Anybody people can just come. hear me now, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Please, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Share it. In fact, what I've decided to do, I've decided to open um, an internet radio station where I would download all your messages as audio wow. and just keep playing it 24-7. We already have because them in audio. We already have them in audio. Okay, fine. Everything because is already on SoundCloud. To hear. All, they are people, all on people, SoundCloud, audio, SoundCloud. Okay, okay. People need to hear. People just need to sit down, take out the time. If it is one hour, two hours, three hours a day, just lock yourself in a room and listen. Take notes. Listen to these messages. Go over the notes again. And I bet you, under a week, you will see the change in your mind, your mindset, the change in your life. It's, it's, oh God, I, I, I really don't know what to say. Now, say may God now, Almighty bless you. Now you the got... God who... Yes. Go ahead. Sir, the, God, yeah, I said, the God who sent you to do what you are doing now, I said, may that God continue to keep you because mm. you have delivered many, many have been delivered and many more will still be delivered because you cannot do anything against the truth yeah. but for the truth. And like you said in your message, I, I, I was just laughing, you said a quote from Henry Ford you, yes. you mentioned. You said, thinking is the hardest work. Yeah. There is. That is why so few you. engage in it. And that's yeah. the truth. I myself, I, I, I used to think that it was very easy to think. But when, when I went through your messages, I knew that I wasn't thinking at all. Mm. I wasn't thinking. And that is what has destroyed the church in Africa and the church in Nigeria. We don't think. So our prayer... Now you understand, why, now you understand why I have to talk about my books. And people say, don't talk about it. Let people just go and read the Bible. I said, they don't even know what they're talking about. All the Bible they've been reading all these years, what can they show for it? All the Bible they've been reading, what, what impact has it done in their life? Yeah. Daniel said, I understood by books, by books, by books. Yeah. So what are they talking about? It's just, a, and it's only an ignorant person that will make such a comment. That why are you why are you selling your book? They should be happy that you are selling your books. Yeah. So they say, I just want to thank you. I said, God Almighty, we continue to bless you. And I strongly believe, like um, I think it was the Bam, uh, Bam I can't remember his name now, that said it. 2018 is going to be a very, 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 <laughs> it's going to be a very surprising year. 2018. This movement has not even started. We we are just touching the tip of the uh, of the iceberg. What God will do in 2018, I mean, the church will be shot. People will be shot. People will be shot. So I just want to thank you, sir. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to use you mightily because this task, only God knows why he gave it to you. Because I think he must have seen something in you that you are the man that is able to do it. And he has committed it into your hands. And I know by God's grace, it will not fail. And you will not fail your master in Jesus' name. You will not fail him. That time, this task will be done. So I want to thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We bless you, and we, we appreciate you. We are behind you. We stand beside you, and we are praying for you every day. Thank so you, God sir. bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we have... Okay, let me talk about a few books here. One of the books that we have here that I think we all should have is called Veritable Source of Energy. Because people need that. You need to know that there is a veritable source of energy you can key into. So if you don't have this book, try to get it. Like I said, all my books are available for anybody to, to, to distribute. You can be a distributor of these books and make money for yourself. You know, you can you get for up to 60-70% from each book. But then you could also read my books for free. It's not about selling them, but it's about reading them. If you are on uh, on uh, Kindle, Amazon Kindle, you can actually get all these books for free. Maybe not all, but at least fifty percent of them will be there for free. Not just not to buy, but to just read, just read them. And because if you are on uh, uh, Amazon uh, Kindle, Amazon, 
you will discover that you can actually read all these books for free. So, but if you want to, you can also buy them on Amazon, by the way. But if you want to buy them cheaper, then you have to write to dssbooks at gmail.com. dssbooks at gmail.com. Insulted by ungodliness. Nigeria and the leadership question. Church shift. Seven tips of self-fulfillment. The Nigeria economy, the way forward. How to overcome the fear of death. How to regain your lost years. How to regain your lost years. Life, life is an opportunity. Where there is problem, there is money. Monoculturalism, the danger of monoculturalism. The law of difference. Creative and innovative power of a genius. How to become great. Stop working from Kusam. Create your own net worth. What to do with your time? Church shift. I mean, uh, sorry, money will make you rich. Let heroes arise. Who am I? Why am I here? It's another book here. Poverty mindset and, uh, and uh, abundance mindset. The source of energy. How to build financial security. Uh, mountain of ignorance. How to be in the here and now. Problem shortcut to prominence. Why you must urgently become a workaholic. <laughs> Raising up the next generation of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. I have more books. How to make Nigeria the greatest country in the world. Nigeria economy. How the Nigeria economy can overtake the American economy. Dignity of labor. Only God can save Nigeria is a myth. Yeah. So all kind of uh, books there that we have and that you could take advantage of. You can order all of them by writing to dsasbooks at gmail.com. Or go to Amazon and read them for free. Kindle, Amazon Kindle. Uh, you know, or you can buy them on Amazon. But DSA, if you write to the office, DSA's books, it will be cheaper. DSA's books at gmail.com. Well, that's all for today, I guess. That's all for today. Thank you so very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Blessings.